In May, I did a video covering the four-year update of owning my 2018 long-range rear-wheel drive Model 3. One thing I didn't go over is the total cost of ownership for those four years and driving 48,260 miles. And it's something that I think is important to show you. So let's go. This video is heavy on numbers, so bear with me on this. I'll break things down into the four common areas when discussing the total cost of ownership for a vehicle. First category includes depreciation, taxes, fees, incentives, and financing. The second category includes auto insurance. The third category includes maintenance, tires, and repairs. And the fourth and final category is fuel, which in my case is electricity. I'll cover all four of these areas now. This part has the most components. For depreciation, I started with the original cost of the car, which was $51,000, plus I added autopilot two years later for a total cost of $53,000. My DMV does an annual appraisal on the car, so this year's is $37,190. I gathered five price quotes from wholesale sellers and pricers of cars. I did an average on all six appraisals and got a value of $13,005.33 for the depreciation. State highway use tax is applied when I purchase the car. That's 3% of the total amount of $51,000. I also added the sales tax for autopilot that was bought later. Next, I have the annual auto registration fees that also include personal property tax on the car. I added the cost for all four years. Next, I received a $7,500 federal tax credit on my income tax for the year 2018. Loan interest for the four years added up to $1,481.84. Combine all of these and the total for the category is $11,613.16. Auto insurance is fairly straightforward. Here are the payments I made for each of the four years, a total of $3,502.64. The price going down is pretty normal since the value of the car usually also goes down during this period of time. Sometimes there is an offset by increasing insurance costs in general. It's always a good idea to shop around for auto insurance every year or two to make sure you're getting the best price. Here I have listed all the maintenance, tires, and repairs for the car grouped by type. Wiper blades, HVAC cabin filters, wiper fluid, test strips for brake fluid and coolant, tire rotation were all free. The biggest expense was replacing the tires at 23,000 miles. The side repeater cameras were replaced to fix the strobing effect at night when using the turn signals. This was totally voluntary on my part. Finally, just before the warranty ended, I had Tesla do a brake cleaning and suspension inspection and lubrication along with an alignment check. It was pretty reasonable at $148. Total for this category was $1,197.02. For the fuel category, I have two types of electricity use, AC charging and DC charging. Luckily, I use the Scan My Tesla app, which keeps track of both types of charging. I used my average home electricity cost over the last four years in calculating the AC usage. This is probably overcompensating since I also have done free public AC charging every once in a while. Next, Tesla keeps track of the supercharging and you can download this info from their website. I recommend doing this annually just in case they discontinue recording the history. Interesting note is that my state used to require supercharging to be paid by the minute, so Tesla did not keep track of the kilowatt hours used. Same thing happened in some other states when traveling. Now my state allows selling electricity by the kilowatt hour. I also received free supercharging for the period of time due to the referral program. In all, I spent $1,584.56 on AC charging, either at home or in public locations. And I spent $236.92 on DC charging at superchargers. 
total for electricity is $1,821.48. And now for the summary. I made this chart to show as much info as possible for the cost over the four years of ownership. As you can see the four categories listed, the first for depreciation, taxes, fees, incentives, and financing is obviously the largest cost, accounting for 64% of the total. Auto insurance comes next at 19.3%, electricity comes in third at 10%, and finally maintenance, tires, and repairs at 6.6%. Comparing my car to a typical ICE vehicle for the first four years may not be a huge difference in the last category of maintenance, but from years 5 to 10 or more, ICE cars will definitely need more maintenance and repair costs over time. Tire costs will be mostly similar if you compare to other performance sedans that would be competitors to the Model 3. Fuel cost for my car in the case of electricity is much less than what an ICE car would spend on gasoline, especially now with the extremely high prices that we're experiencing. The first category is greatly affected by the current high value for Teslas. This may or may not be similar for other EVs. Also, for new buyers, the 7500 federal tax credit that I received will not apply, and it greatly affected this category. The other taxes, fees, and financing would probably be similar in other ICE cars. Here is a donut chart of the four categories. I hope this gives you a better understanding of the total cost of ownership for my Tesla Model 3 over the last four years. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.